Hello and welcome back to the Waban podcast, the movie and TV show podcast where an expert on the subject discusses things within normal average uh, audience member. And this time I am joined by Arnold Schwarzenegger. I need your boots, clothes, and your motorcycle. Yes, yes. And and um, you'll probably be back too, so. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm here every episode. That's true. You'll be back, and you'll yeah. be back next episode. <laughs> there, There is so many lines. Like, <laughs> obviously, I knew a lot of these lines came from the Terminator movies. Yeah. Like there's so many that were like, oh, there's the line. There's there's the like line. there's all so iconic. Come with you know? me if you want to live. <laughs> yep, I will be back. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> um, yeah. I think the only other like really the only iconic Schwarzenegger line that's not from these movies is like get to the chopper. I think that's oh, yeah. from get to the chopper. That's from Predator, I'm pretty sure. I've never mm-hmm. seen that either. But that's like the one of the extremely iconic um, Schwarzenegger lines that's not from Terminator. I feel like the rest are from Terminator yeah, um, yeah. and Terminator 2. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we both watched Terminator and the Terminator and uh, Terminator 2 um, Judgment Day. That's what the mm-hmm. second one's called, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, we did not watch the other Terminator movies because we don't want to. <laughs> I mean, I'm willing to, but before the podcast started, you were just like, no, I have no interest. Okay, so I yeah, I was watching these like reviews of the other ones, and I, I really didn't know anything about the stories of the other movies. Like I already bef- ahead of time kind of knew the general plots of the first two movies before going into this, and I knew nothing about the the, the ones that come after the first two. Um, but did you know that in one of them, Christian Bale plays John Connor. Like, that's just weird to me. Like, I didn't know I need, that. I need a refresh on who Christian Bale is. Hold on. Um, he's he's Batman in the Dark Knight. Oh, yeah, yeah. Why? I don't know. Uh, it's like I don't know. You know, John Connor's an adult at that point, obviously. You know, but yeah, yeah. It's like. I think whatever movie that one is, I think it's like Salvation, maybe Terminator Salvation. I don't know. It's like the fourth one. And it's like he's it's like the the apocalypse already happened and it's showing sort of things happening after. I don't know. Apparently it was it looked really boring, actually. Mm-hmm. But um, so, so the the time travel idea of the whole the whole center of Terminator was just thrown away and now they're back in the future. Right. I guess. Yeah, I the just looking so like I watch these like just review like walkthroughs of like the sequels just to get an idea of like what happens in them and what they're like. Mm-hmm. Um and it just it seems like it it should it definitely should have stopped at 2. Like none of the other ones look like they add anything of value to the story and just make the story more and more confusing. Um and I'm pretty uh, okay. sure the latest one, the latest movie uh, that came out like only a, like two years ago, I think. Yeah, I act- the trailers. Yeah, I think that one is actually like completely. They they completely made the other ones not canon except for like the first two, mm. because they knew they're like, uh, we'll just get rid of all those and make this a direct sequel to Terminator Two. Kind of, I think that was the idea at least. <sighs> Do you, was that one well received, or is that one also? I terrible? think it was generally. Um, mm-hmm. but I, I don't know. I think a lot of audiences didn't really like it though. Like it was, I, I think what it was, was that after the one before it Terminator Genesis, which mm-hmm. is like the most hated one, that one was just so bad that when Terminator dark fate, the most recent one came out, people were like, Oh wow. It's not, it doesn't suck as much as Terminator Genesis. Okay. There you go. <laughs> it sucks uh-huh. less than the last one. Um, Okay, so it's comparatively better, but not right. good. From what I from what I can tell, yeah, um, yeah. There's one Terminator movie that doesn't have Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. What? And it that's the one with Christian Bale, I think, because it's like in the future, and like there's they don't do the go back in time thing. 
it's just about the battles happening and like the the war against the machines kind of mm. but um yeah it's i don't know i i i think it's better to just go with the first two movies and be like all right um because once you so as soon as you start the third movie because like this they're like there there's like a you know new terminator goes back in time to kill john connor again Mm -hmm. um and then he's like wait i thought we stopped uh he's like i thought we stopped the 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 apocalypse i thought we stopped skynet and everything and the terminator that goes back to protect him is like no you did not stop it you just delayed it it eventually happened and he's like oh it's like I mean, I do remember <laughs> at the end of the second movie, my brain was like, "Well, what about his hand that it was stuck in the gears that he had?" To yeah, <laughs> that is a good point. Yeah, like, uh, they just kind of forgot about there. that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, well, this I feel like I like just thinking about the sec the first two as like that's it. After the second one, it's like sure they stopped Skynet from happening in the future. There you go, series over, done. D- don't just don't pay attention to the rest of the movies. <laughs> wow. Um, and then Terminator Genesis, I think, because it goes like, because the third one is Terminator 3, um, ju- what, I don't know what it's called, not Judgment Day, uh, Rise of the Machines, I think. So like it, at the end, it shows, at the very end, it shows when the it, bombs actually go off and like how John Connor survived it and stuff. And then the, oh, okay. the fourth one is like showing john connor in like afterwards in like fighting the wars and stuff as christian bale um and that one seems kind of pointless honestly like it doesn't seem to add anything to the story i don't know it's just kind of the wars happening i guess if it's already the war then (laughs) it's no longer a terminator movie right because the entire point of the terminator movies is they go back in time to try to terminate the people and i don't know and then terminator genesis which is the most hated one is the one after that and it seems like like that one they like travel the time they they travel back in time and then then a few people there travel back forward in time a little bit again to do something else and then they like create a time machine back in time somehow and like i don't know it's really weird it just look it's just like i'm just like i don't even have to watch witness for witness yeah, I think that's the one where it became the most convoluted. Um, mm. But yeah, no, if you stick with the first two movies, you're good. So let's actually talk about them. Yeah, the the yeah, movies we idea. were supposed to be talking about in this video. So um, I guess we'll start with the first one. Um, yeah, first thoughts of the first movie. <laughs> um, it's old. You can tell it's very old. There are a lot of scenes that are like, you know, when you first see like the skinless Terminator. Yeah. The, T101 you know it it looks cool it looks cool right but it's still like janky and like photo animated kind of yeah yeah well it still holds up pretty well I think one of the big things with the first movie is the fact that like it did not have a very big budget Mm. um it was like compared especially compared to the other movies like so they had to kind of work with very little um, and like I think immediately, as soon as you start, as the second movie starts, you can tell that they have like a m- lot more money to work with. You can oh, tell yeah, right away. Money. You're like, oh yeah, this is, you know, there's Not like because it, but like advances in technology. Yeah, yeah. Because they both like open with like that scene from the future, with like the skulls and stuff or whatever. But mm-hmm. like the second movie, it just looks better. Mm-hmm. And you're like, yeah, this is you know. Um, but yeah, no, I mean the effects aren't don't always hold up. There's certain moments where they're a little a little weird in the first one, like the stop motion closer to the end where it was yeah, like yeah, yeah, uh, the where Terminator the walking, Terminator walking, and he's just like kind of janky and right, you know, stop motion ish. Yeah, yeah, which stop motion could can be done really well to. But like I mean, again, like they had a low budget, they probably did the best they could uh, mm-hmm. with what they had. Um, yeah, I mean, it's. I think the first one is it's a it's a simple story. Like it's just there's this war against the machines in the future. The machines sent something back in time to stop somebody from being born, and the P- human sent somebody back in time to protect him or protect her. I guess the yeah, the mother. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
and it just kind of plays with that idea and you know shows the the relentlessness of the terminator and yeah <laughs> like cuz there's the story element of it which isn't like extremely predominant you know it's mainly an action movie at least in my opinion but oh yeah for sure little, you know throw on that twist in the end where the guy that came back in time to protect sarah connor it ends up being john connor's father the guy that they're trying to prevent the birth of yeah and so you know it introduces this kind of closed loop idea of time with going yeah. back in time which whenever time travel stories have that it's always just really weird it's just like how does this time loop work how did how what <laughs> you know i i always like that i idea yeah where it's like because like it's hard to wrap your head around it but you also kind of don't need to because it's just a closed loop right so right. You know, everything happened the way it did because they went back in time in the future yeah, yeah. So, and yeah and then the sequels not the second one but the other sequels uh kind of ruin the closed loop idea yeah but like you know they kind of break out of the closed loop i guess yeah because is... they because they won they knew because it was so successful that they wanted to make more money even though the <laughs> story they didn't need more movies you know the story didn't yeah. need more um <laughs> but yeah i i i don't really have a lot to say about the first one i feel like i feel like this first one is definitely the most simple one like it's i mean which you know is like that with a lot of these kind of series where like the first mm -hmm. one's pretty simple story and then the rest of them just kind of build on it um i mean huh. i enjoyed it like it it was old but it held up decently yeah well, everything considered yeah and, and the and action was good there was some mm -hmm. decently like tense moments oh yeah um the first one even has some slight like they're they are like the Terminator movies are known as like an action franchise, but the first one even has some like almost horror aspects to it. Yeah, yeah, I did yeah. notice that. Yeah, so it's like because like it's just this you know robotic creature constantly after you, like you can't mm -hmm. stop it kind of thing, which is especially in the end when it was like when she's like crawling away from him and he's like, just, he had lost his legs and he's just crawling after her. Like yep, there's this little like going. Yeah. Or like, you know, they think they blow him up, but then he just like rises out of the flames and he's still mm -hmm. there. Like there are definitely those like horror aspects to the first one that I think aren't, you know, you don't have the horror aspects as much when you move on. It just turns into more full on action. Uh, movie in the second one yeah. but very good action movie but it kind of loses the some of the horror uh vibes that the first one has yeah i think like the main core of this story is the relentlessness of the terminator which you know compounds into the action and the horror that you were mentioning mm -hmm. but they do it very well in the first movie because it's like it doesn't it's very clear that it doesn't care about, you know, what it has to do to get to complete its mission. You know, it, mm -hmm. it has the gun shop owner grab all of its guns and then just shoots him and yeah. walks out, you know, and it yeah. goes through systematically through the phone book to each Sarah Connor until it gets to the right one. Mm -hmm. And then whenever it gets damaged, you know, it just repairs itself and moves on. And then there's the times when it, it can't repair like the flesh on the outside of it. So it's one eye is showing or like the skin is all scraped off and it has that weird, like half man, half machine look. That's just very disturbing and very visceral and it's yeah. done very well. Yeah. Yeah. It just, but yeah. Yeah. It's definitely like, yeah. And, and I think it helps the, what helps to create the suspense is that there's no, like, like it takes place years before these machines are even created. So there's like mm -hmm. no sort of like, ooh, we know how to take this down. Here's a good way to take it down. You know, um, like uh, like Kyle Reese might know a little bit more about how the machines work and and ways to take down machines. But like, mm -hmm. you literally have to go when like the the way the time machine works is you can't like take anything with you. You right. know, like the one guy, the one 
the psychiatrist asked him, he's like, oh, I asked him, if, why didn't he take a ray gun? <laughs> and they were like making fun of it. But like, mm-hmm. that's how the time machines work. You know, they literally like show up naked and it's like, so it's like you can go back in time, but you can't go back forward in time and you're stuck there and you're stuck there just with yourself and you have to sort of figure out what to do, which, um, you know, how to like find supplies and, and, and create things and whatever on your yeah, own. Yeah. Which I think makes Kyle Reese's character a little bit more interesting to show like, you know, his sort of resourcefulness. Like he shows up just himself and he's like, you know, he finds ways to get, he, he finds like weapons and he creates these bombs and like, he's, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Yeah. So I, I really like that idea instead of like them showing up back in time, like with laser guns and the, all, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> which, that would kind of kill the tension because they would have weaponry that they know can kill the Terminator. Right. Yeah. And the fact that like the hum, like he's just a human that they sent back in time mm-hmm. to protect her. Like he knows, you know, he's he's a very, you know skilled human who's you know was obviously fought in the wars a lot and like is very resourceful but he's still just human yeah you know fighting again trying to protect her against this unstoppable machine you know yeah it's a very uh interesting and you know well done dynamic that they've created with that yeah and it creates a very uh creates a lot of really good tension um and also, like, um, I don't know what I was going to Oh, yeah. Also, like, the first movie is, like, very, very easily, like, self-contained. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't need sequels, you know, to make it, you know, like, you could stop after the first one. I mean, I'm glad they made the second one because the second one's, you awesome. know. Awesome. Yeah. Like, really good. But, like, as far as the story goes, you could end with this and then kind of leave it there. Mm-hmm. Um, which I mean, I think was always, I mean, they did, I don't think they intended to make more. I think, you know, it was originally, it was like, you know, this low budget action movie that, you know, was probably gonna, you know, I think a lot of people thought it wasn't going to do well. Like even, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger didn't think it was going to do well, mm-hmm. which it's actually interesting. I, I read this thing it was or saw this thing. It was like, it said that like Arnold Schwarzenegger, was originally going to be casted as Kyle Reese. But they mm-hmm. changed him to the villain and he didn't really like the idea of of being seen as like a villain character. And I think this was before um, Arnold Schwarzenegger was as, as big of a name as he became. Like he was, you know, right. he was famous enough, but he wasn't like, I mean, these movies are probably a huge part of what made him as, as big of a name as he was. Um and he didn't really want to be known as like the villain in a movie, but he agreed to it anyways. Cause he's like, ah, probably no one will see this movie anyways. Turns out, <laughs> turns out it's, classic. turns out it's like his most iconic role he's ever played, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, which is great, which is probably part of the reason why they switched him to being a good guy in the next movie, you know, and literally all of the Terminator movies after this, he, I think pretty much usually plays a, a good guy like a right you know which i i do want to talk about that because that's an excellent twist oh yeah yeah like, we'll, we'll get to that we'll get to that movie. um there was i know there was something else i was thinking about saying about this first movie but i don't remember what it was oh well i i just wanted to point out how good the i think the casting of arnold schwarzenegger is in this role oh yeah he because he's like this very big and imposing individual Right. And he has a very good, like intense and like poker face expression. Yeah, exactly. That I think that's the thing is like I I've never really like took him very seriously as an actor in a lot of his roles because he just he's just not good at like really showing real human emotion kind of. But like he's that works not in his favor in exactly. This he's not showing he doesn't have to show human emotion. He's supposed to sound robotic, you know? Mm-hmm. So it yeah, he's he's really good in the role, you know. And again, like his perfect, you know, f- physique and everything, you know, mm-hmm. the helps just too. Imposing <laughs> like power of his physique, and that reflects like the brutalness of 
a Terminator. Yeah. 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 No, he, he works really well. This is probably the, I mean, the best role he's ever done. I think like this in the next movie. And so it's, yeah, it's, it's really good. I think the only other thing that I wanted to mention was the accuracy of how like realistic everyone reacts to their stories and everything. Mm -hmm. Cause like, you know, they get taken in by the police and Reese is fully cooperating, explaining everything that he knows. And, you know, they just think he's insane because why wouldn't they? Right. And, you know, they created the, the idea, this story Mm -hmm. with the intent of it not being provable. Right. Yeah. And so Reese's story of tell that he's telling the psychiatrist ends up being unprovable, no evidence. Yeah. You know, he can't do anything to make them believe him besides showing them the Terminator, obviously, but right. how can he do that? Yeah. It's, you know, this that dynamic is very well done because it's like he gets stuck there. He gets stuck in that loop until the Terminator finds them. Yeah. 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 It, it is. It is interesting. I like that. Um, yeah. And it's like, and it even takes a minute for Sarah to believe him too. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it takes a minute of her being tracked down by the Terminator and seeing just how like relentless and yeah, it stuff that it is full of shotgun shells and just getting back yeah, up. <laughs> that's the point where she's like, Oh yeah, you're right. I do believe you. Um, yeah. One thing I will say though is their little like romance or whatever was it did seem a little weird to me. Yeah, it's not very fleshed out at all. It was just this guy had a picture of her in the future and so when he came back in time he was already in love with her for some reason. Yeah. And she just went along with it. Which like high stress situation, sure things happen, but Yeah. Meh. I mean, you could go with the whole idea that, like, because they've, they're, you know, they're on the run, hiding out, they're, you know, yeah, you know, like you said, high stress situation that can mm -hmm. cause people to bond with each other really quickly, kind of. Mm -hmm. Um, so maybe it's something like with that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's interesting. It would be nicer if there was, you know, something, some sort of growth in that regard instead of it just popping up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but we can move on to the second one if you want to. Sure, yeah. Okay. Um, so Terminator 2, Judgment Day, is genuinely, I think, one of the best action movies ever made. It's really good, yeah. And, like, to see all of the like real practical like effects they were doing and stuff like when he f when they when he flew like a helicopter underneath a bridge they really flew a helicopter under the bridge for that scene you know what i mean it wasn't oh. like a model it wasn't like a held up by strings like they really did all all of the stunts and stuff they did in that movie like it's insane <laughs> wow also, the CGI that is in the movie is actually really good for 1991. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I assume most of that is like the liquid metal, the T-1000. Yeah, yeah. That's That Can stuff it, is like CGI, yeah. Yeah, that holds up really well. Yeah, for 91, that's like – like even today, to for today's standards, it's still good, you know? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, yeah, yeah. But I, I think one thing that helps, though, is they didn't have an over-reliance on the CGI. It's like they used it sparingly only when it's needed. Because, mm -hmm. um, like, there are certain, you know, there's, like, the certain scenes where he, like, gets hit and, like, he, like, breaks apart. And you can see, like, this weird, almost foam-like kind of thing or... Yeah, well, there's, like, like, especially, like, that last scene where he, like, tears apart and he almost looks like... That was actually a real prop to look oh. used to look like that it was like a weird like foam thing they had there like for certain things like that but then like they would go back to cgi when he's like repairing himself or like whatever mm -hmm. but like they had kind of a mix of like real props they created and cgi yeah it um, worked really well yeah 
Yeah. I mean, I, that's an interesting thing. Like back in the day, like early days of CGI, they did a lot. A lot of movies that did CGI well did it well because they had sort of a, a mix of like real things and CGI. So mm-hmm. it was still – there was still something grounding it in reality so it didn't look completely fake, you know? Yeah. Um, like – for example, like um, um, Jurassic Park, you know, like they act, they did have CGI dinosaurs in some scene, some little moments here and there, but they also had for certain shots, like especially the more close up shots, they had like big animatronics, like mm-hmm. that were really there, you know, like there was a good blending of it to make it because they they it's like they know they knew the limitations of the technology, so they didn't push it. They they used it sparingly and they used it enough or in small enough amounts to where it didn't look unrealistic. Like they knew what they were doing with what they right, had right. kind of. They used um, the practical stuff as a foundation and yeah. then used the CGI to build off of it and yeah. actually right. it, made it merge into yeah. reality in the, on the yeah, screen. Yeah, it's – yeah, exactly. They, it's like they only use CGI when there's absolutely no way to do that shot without CGI, you know, like mm-hmm. when that's the only option that works for that shot. Um, but yeah, so moving beyond the amazing effects and stuff and just the, all the the practical effects of actually, you know, destroying tons of cars and actually flying a helicopter under a freaking bridge, like that's just <laughs> awesome. I mean, I'm sure like it wasn't the actor who flew it, obviously. It was just oh, yeah. like actual trained helicopter pilot i'm sure but uh, you do that in video games not in real life yeah okay so there's there's i actually saw this when i was looking at the reviews of like the the movies there's this one shot um apparently in this movie where like so like you know that shot where like the 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 truck drives off the bridge and like lands and it gets like the front gets crushed a little bit. Like the guy drives the truck off the edge of the Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. the T one thousand is drives off the bridge into yeah. like the this like LA River kind of thing. Yeah. After John Connor. Yeah. So and there's like a shot of it from the ground where the camera's decently close to it. And apparently mm-hmm. all of the camera operators didn't want to get that close to it because it was like they were like that's that's really risky that's too dangerous didn't want to get that close to the crash Mm -hmm. so apparently james cameron the director himself was decided to man that camera because nobody else wanted to (laughs) for that shot that's such a baller move like okay (laughs) you guys are too scared to do it i'll do it let's go come on oh man uh james cameron did some really good stuff back in the day i feel like now He's his his movies are okay. Like he directed, I think, like Avatar, maybe. I think mm. I don't know. Um, but he's. Yeah. Don't ask me. I don't know this stuff. I believe it was uh, like the Blue People Avatar. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, he that that's that's just amazing. I'm like, wow, like the like actual director is just was like, you know what, I'm doing this. Uh, uh, well, it was a, the thing I wasn't sure about, though. I was like, well, technically, it's a still shot. Like, there wasn't any camera movement with the shot. So, couldn't they have just set up a camera, like, and, like, moved back to film, like, set it up on a tripod? I don't know. Mm-hmm. But apparently, I don't know. Apparently, they needed somebody at the camera during the shot. I don't know. Whatever. Either way, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, so, anyways. I guess to get into the story, um, like you said before, there's a really well done twist. Yeah, which admittedly, I bet if you saw the trailers when it came out, it was probably revealed in the trailers, considering I, that it's a main part of the movie. I don't know. I feel like it wasn't. Like, I feel like it was one of those things where they genuinely tried to like hide the twist. Mm-hmm. Maybe. I haven't seen the trailers. Uh, but now, yeah. I. I already knew the twist because like I'd heard, I'd already know a lot of stuff about the movie, but like, had, mm. like if you had watched the first movie and knew nothing about any of the sequels and then watched this, like me, that's yeah, that's what happened with me. And it was great. Yeah. I want to go through it step by step. Right. Yeah. Cause you watch the first movie, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger is the Terminator T one Oh one. Right. Yeah. And the other guy they send back is human. You, you know, that's what you know. Yes. You start the second movie 
Arnold Schwarzenegger appears as clearly as the Terminator again. You know, he right. arrives in the same stance. He go, does goes through about the same motions to get what he needs. You know, I need your boots, your clothes, and your motorcycle. Right, and you know, he's clearly like violent, not afraid to kill people, so he doesn't seem like a good guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. The other Terminator so shows up, the T-1000. You don't see him appear because, you know, Reese, when he appeared, was on the ground. He was hurt and, he, you know, he had a moment to recover. Mm-hmm. You don't see the other Terminator appear in this one, though. So you didn't you don't know that. Yeah. So you and like he, assume like, that he's you know, human. <laughs> yeah. He took down a cop and used his got his uniform and that's all you saw of him. Well, basically. And what it looks like from the shot, like later on you can look back and be like oh he probably killed that cop but mm-hmm. like the way they shoot it it looks like he just like knocked him out or something yeah yeah it doesn't yeah. look brutal as and it doesn't show him transform like into the clothes so you th- assume he took the clothes mm-hmm. when in reality he probably just used them as a base to like use his transforming skills to like psh- but it doesn't show that yeah right then they both go on their hunt for john connor T-101 is very clearly, you know, no nonsense. You see that he learns from the first movie a little bit or, you know, whatever we want to call it. He's updated because, you know, he hides his gun in the box of flowers that time. Yeah. But the T-1000 talks to people. It, you know, it's charismatic. It goes through and it blends in with people and it actually like seems to humanely search for John Connor. Yeah. The, yeah. So the entire time leading up to this moment where they're both pincering John Connor in this hallway, you're thinking, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger's the evil one, and this new guy's the human sent back to protect him until he goes, duck and blast the other guy, and he turns out to be made of liquid metal. <laughs> That's such a good twist. Yeah, it is. It was done so well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, if I didn't know it already, like, and I went into this blind, I would have, that, that would have been a great twist for me too, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I mean, here's evidence right here that the twist worked really well because it works really well on you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know anything about this. It was great. Yeah, that is great. And I remember thinking in that scene, like, like the T-101's already got a shotgun up pointed at John Connor. But the other guy barely even has his gun out. So are they just going to do some like vague movie magic crap and, you know, save him somehow, even though he doesn't have the time to? Oh, no. Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> is the good one now. Then you okay. go, yeah, yeah. Then he just goes, get down. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think, um, well, and, and they even set it up to where John himself thinks that he's trying to kill him. Well, yeah, because he takes out a shotgun as soon as he sees him. Right. And he just and he's like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Yeah, no, it's 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 a it's definitely a very effective uh, little twist. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Yeah, because at the in the opening of the movie, the the the. You know the whole uh, exposition at the beginning, it's like, oh, they sent two Terminators back in time at different times to stop John Connor. Um, Mm -hmm. But we also sent people to intercept those, whatever. They didn't say who they sent, you know? Yeah. You go, you were looking at, you're like, okay, one of the people they sent was Kyle Reese, right? To the earlier time. And the other one was somebody that they sent in this time. Okay, cool. Whatever. Um, Yeah. They do. They just did everything they could to reinforce the idea that Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. was the bad one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'll have Until to watch. He th- wasn't. And I'll have to watch. Great. I'll have to watch the original trailers. The original trailer too to see if they like kept it a secret even in the trailer. You know, because mm-hmm. like yeah, there are some trailers that are like that give things away, and you're like, who made this trailer? Like, come on. Right. And like, you well, know, the director of the movie is probably watching the trailer like, Ugh, why did the studio approve this trailer? What the it hell? It ruins my twist. Dang it. Like, come on. <laughs> It'd be like if there was like a, 
spoiler alert for Fight Club, by the way, if the trailer for Fight Club was just like <laughs> when a guy's alternate ego shows up <laughs> yeah. and you're like, wait, like, no, that ruins it. Shut up. <laughs> but like, the thing with Terminator 2 is, you know, that's like 30 minutes into the movie, maybe. So like, right. it's a main plot point of the movie. So it feels like there wouldn't be many uh, scenes that they could use in the in the trailer that, you know, wouldn't give it away, you know? I mean, you could probably show scenes later on in the movie. Like there's, you know, the scene of him shooting up all the police cars and stuff. Like you could show yeah, that yeah. shot or like, you know, just random shots of him like shooting a gun or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, like you couldn't show like shots of him like giving John Connor a high five and stuff, but you know, <laughs> that would seem a little weird. Wait, I thought he was trying to kill him. What? <laughs> I thought he was. Uh-huh. That's weird. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and it's interesting too because like, so it's it's shown that he says that John Connor reprogrammed him to like follow his orders or whatever, right? Um, and it's actually interesting because you actually show even at the beginning of the movie that John Connor is good with technology. Like he hacks right, the ATM the and number. yeah. Yeah. Right. And like, and like later on he, he hacks the one machine at like the Skynet place or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so like you kind of show that like, Oh, he's always been good with like machines and, and technology and stuff. So it makes sense that like years later he would have been able to figure out how to reprogram a terminator you know mm-hmm. um and you kind of get the idea that half like a lot of that is because uh sarah connor learned everything everything she could to teach him in order for him to become this guy that he was yeah. supposed to be yeah exactly because i think they mentioned like sarah connor had taught him like things about like fighting and whatever i think mm-hmm. too probably um One thing I will say, though, is this movie is probably one of the best movies of for an example of like a a child actor um, that I can think of. Yeah, because they display all the skills that he learned and, you know, how he's good under pressure and stuff like that. But it also displays like the innocent child side, like teaching the Terminator had a high five and thumbs up and tell yeah. him, you know, hasta la vista, baby. Yeah, yeah. And he 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 actually plays it pretty well, too. Like, the actor plays it pretty well. And, like, mm-hmm. and, and the thing is, like, like um, he feels like it's a character. It's like you find, you know, most movies, when they try to add, like, child characters, they never feel like a real kid. It feels like an adult trying to write what it, they think a kid would say. But yeah, it doesn't, yeah. and it always feels kind of off, and you're just like, ugh, like you're like, just don't have child characters in movies. It never works. But this is one where he he feels like a real kid, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I I really like his character, especially in this. with his panicked like, oh god, he just pulled a gun on this random guy that I called off the street. Like, mm-hmm. no, stop. Yeah. Yeah, I think in general, the characters are just really well done in this movie. Like, you know, yeah. Sarah Connor, I think, is even more interesting of a character than she was in the last movie. Like, she wasn't bad in the last movie, but like, I think she's just, I mean, I, clearly her characters changed a lot, you know, because she went oh, yeah. so many years. Uh, she was trying to teach her son, but then she was labeled as insane. So she got taken away and like, yeah. you know, she's like, she has this like weird paranoia uh, yeah ptsd adjacent kind of thing for something that hasn't happened yet and like reasonably she would be extremely messed up over that and she really kind of is yeah but like you know it works it's done well Mm -hmm. yeah it yeah and the actress plays it really well too Mm -hmm. like it's the performances in this movie are really good and i i (laughs) I really like the sort of like uh, the bonding between um, John Connor and and the Terminator. Like mm-hmm. they're like little scenes where he's like showing him the thumbs up and stuff and the high fives and not like. <laughs> yeah, why do you cry? 
<laughs> yes. And then at the end, he's like, I know, I know why you cry, but I can't cry. <laughs> <laughs> but I can never do it. Mm -hmm. That was a sad scene. Yeah. <laughs> but, Except the entire time I was thinking, but you forgot your arm. No, you, yeah. You, you, didn't you had to rip it off in order to get here. It's still there. You forgot about it. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe maybe after that scene cuts, the characters went, oh shit, his arm, and went and found it and threw it in. And we just it didn't show that part, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Because it wasn't important to the emotion of the scene. It was just, you know, like, you know, afterwards the characters were like, oh shit, let's go get the arm and melt it down. Let's go. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe like after the camera's cut away. <laughs> You know, the entire time I was thinking, uh, like, oh, there's the sequel plug-in, because they missed uh, the arm, they're going to use that for the sequels. Yeah, I don't know if they do, do or not. Maybe they do. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't really care. Like, it, it's one of those things where it's like, you get to this point and you're like, okay, this is a, a cool idea, cool concept that was done as well as it can be done. It was, it was, it's good. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm good with it. I don't I don't need any more of this, especially just knowing that the other movie, none of the other movies are anywhere near as good as the second one. Like you're just kind of like, yeah, ready to 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 be done, uh, done with this series. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's a good wrap up, a good emotional end. It, yeah, it tries to wrap up everything story wise. It doesn't. It misses one thing, but that's fine. Yeah, I and mean, that's a minor detail that's not hugely yeah. important. Like, um, I'm just nitpicky. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was interesting because earlier in the movie, there was the scene where they, the, they were, the psychiatrist was talking to Sarah, and he's like, well, if this robot was really there and was crushed, wouldn't there be evidence of it? And I was like, yeah, that's weird. That seems like a weird plot hole. Mm -hmm. But then like literally right after, like they showed the scientists, they were like, oh, we have the, we, they took the, all the remains of it and they're like, we have it. And so the, nobody, there was no, they, they took it all and left nothing there. And I was like, oh, that's why there was no evidence. Cause like, yeah, they cleaned <laughs> it up and now they're using it to advance their technology. Yeah. Um, I do also really like the character of the guy, like the scientist guy, uh, Miles. What is it? Miles Dyson. Dyson. Yeah. He's because it's like he's it's like so Sarah goes in to like try to kill him. She can't because she sees like he's a, he's just a guy with a family and, mm -hmm. and whatever. Um, and like he's genuinely like. Like. Uh, feels terrible hearing about like what's going to happen and like what he's yeah. going to create. And he's like, you know, so you it's can, like there is still like the, the sprinklings of like, you know, you're judging me for something I haven't done yet. It, so he, he has a right to be a bit angry over it, but he also is understanding that, yeah, this needs to be stopped. Yeah. Um, and also his death scene is like just, intense like the, yeah. the actor sells it really well because you know he's shot and he's like having trouble breathing and when he's just there like <gasps> like it's genuinely like mm -hmm. and he's like holding the 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 detonator or whatever i like think he was holding something heavy above the detonator so that when he dropped it it hit the detonator yeah I think. yeah um but yeah no his like He's just like, I don't know, just the way he played it, the actor played it and everything was just really intense. Like that's. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. He was a pretty good actor, too. All, all the performances in the movie are really good. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't have any real issues with any of the acting or anything. So that's. There was also like Sarah Connor, you know, knew this was coming. She prepared for it. She prepared to be this badass that could teach John. Mm hmm. And, you know, John was taught by her, so he's also used to it, the Terminator, the Terminator. But Dyson is just a dude. Like, he's just yeah. a computer guy. Well, so, and like... that is displayed very well. Yeah, it's so like when the... Nervous and sweating. Yeah, and when the police come in, they're all like, get down, and he doesn't at first. Like, he's, you know, yeah, he's not uh, really ready for situations like this. Yeah, he's just yeah. panicking Which is why part. he ends up uh getting shot yeah 
Um, yeah, no, it's yeah, it's, it's really good. I, I, I think they do a good job. So like we were talking in the last movie about how they really raise the tension really well with mm-hmm. like, like, how do you stop this thing? They do a really good job of doing that here, too, because like you go, oh, well, now they have a Terminator on their side. So like, is the threat as big? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Because now is. the other one's liquid. You can't this, like cut it or right. punch it. Like, yeah, in the first movie, you're kind of like, okay, well, this, the, you kind of think the Terminator is really difficult to destroy, but it's like a solid piece of metal. If you put enough force on it, you could probably crush it and destroy it. But this yeah. thing is like, how? You, <laughs> you know, there's the it's... scene, they freeze it and you think maybe this they've stopped it and he like shatters it. But then like, as soon as it starts to melt, it just pieces back together and you're like, mm-hmm. Well, how do you, <laughs> how do you do this? Um, I I was thinking about that the entire movie too, because it was like, <clears throat> like you said, they have the Terminator, so they have something huge on their side, but they also amped up the other side even bigger. Yeah, in in a way that's very unique, because uh, the entire time I was thinking and comparing it to like D and D. Yeah. So the term the T one hundred one would just be like you know. A boss character right nothing really special about it it's just relentless and keeps going but it has it still has hp it still takes damage mm-hmm. the t1000 is all of that but immune to you know slashing bludgeoning and piercing right it's right immune to a ton of damage because it's just a liquid you know it'll just yeah. reform yeah yeah exactly it's like the yeah the terminator gets slowly can get damaged over time whereas this one just doesn't Different. yeah and yeah. you know they display the one weakness that it has which if you can't damage it physically damage it chemically or you know with temperature or something like that yeah so they display it with it, it freezing and then you know finally with melting it down which is a wonderful situ- uh, solution for that situation yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. I, I think there's really no other way they could have done it in a believe destroyed him in a believable way. Cause like, mm-hmm. again, you go back in time and like with modern day technology, this is 19, you know, this is nineties technology, right? Like you, you know, what are you going to do to destroy something like this? They don't have futuristic technology of like ways to take out something like this. So you ha- yeah. have, this is the only logical way to do it i think so Mm -hmm. yeah um and like they could have done something like you know a different way of damage it chemically like like chemical burns or acid but you know that might not work yeah or they could have hacked it with you know however but they don't have an equally powerful technology the closest thing they have is terminator but Mm -hmm. it's also more advanced than the Terminator. So that would have been not as believable anyway. Yeah. 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 It's yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, it's, uh, yeah, it's the, the, they definitely, uh, create a very good, interesting threat in this movie. Yeah. Um, I really like the scene where he's like in the, you know, where he's melting down though. Oh yeah. And he's like, there's like that screeching noise and he's like transforming into all of the people that he had transformed into earlier. Like yeah. it's like almost like a last ditch effort of like trying to do anything to find a way out of yeah. there. Just like cycling through his options that he has like downloaded, just trying to figure out a way to survive. And there just is none. And there's that like the way he's like, as he's watching him like melt down is like actually kind of haunting and like, like, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> really creepy and it's like whoa <laughs> it's actually it's actually really cool i like how they uh did that yeah um but yeah and then it, it kind of ends there there was apparently a few different endings for this movie interestingly which i found out when i was watching like the reviews of it so like the what way it ends do you mean what's that what do you mean by that? Like, like apparently there was a, or? apparently there was a version, an earlier version of the movie that had a different ending. I don't know if it was like a deleted scene before it even came out, or if it was the theatrical one. But they changed it later to make it fit with the other movies more. I don't know. 
But apparently, so like this, this movie ends with that scene where it's like showing the shot of the road and it's like, you know, the future is uncertain. We don't know what's going to happen, but you know, we're, you know, we're going to move forward or whatever. So it's mm-hmm. kind of like it leaves you in this. Un- it's, it's. I really like that ending because it leaves you in this uncertain thing where you're like, did they stop Skynet from happening or will it happen? You know, you're kind of like it's ambiguous. It leaves it up, uh, up in the air where you're like, hmm, interesting. Right. Um, which I think is a great way to just if you watch the first two movies, I always. It's sometimes it's nice to have those sort of ambiguous endings where it makes you think, you know. But there was another ending which I saw. It was like a scene of like Sarah Connor is like a little older now or whatever. And it shows like her living in like uh, the future and, and like a normal happy world. And she's like the, you know, the year 1997 came and went and it didn't ever happen, blah, blah, blah. And like, you know, it's like showing that, that it was sound familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, like, when, the, if that was, like, the, the original theatrical version or if that was just a deleted scene. I don't know. But because, um, again, they maybe they changed it to the other version when they started doing just to make it um, fit with the other movies. Because, like, obviously the other movies were like, oh, well, it didn't. We can it make did more money. <laughs> So it so it wasn't a happy ending. So I actually don't know, but the the Netflix the one that's on Netflix has the the ambiguous ending. So right, um, yeah. Which I'm assuming that's the one you watched. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the first movie is not on Netflix. It is not because it has shadowed uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger genitalia. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they could like edit around that in the in it to make a. Uh, to make a, a is that to make it for good for Netflix? Is that actually the reason? I mean, I would assume so. I mean, every other like movie that we watched that wasn't on Netflix had some degree of nudity. Maybe. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if that's. I mean, the thing is, if it's rated R, I think that's like a good enough thing to be like. Just so you know, there might be nudity in here. Yeah, but the <laughs> that's weird about that crap. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Who knows? Um, but yeah, yeah. I actually owned the first one on DVD um, mm. and never had seen it. So I was able to watch the first one on DVD and then the second one on Netflix. But but um, yeah, um, I don't know if I have a lot more to say on this unless um, you do. I guess not specifically about the movie, but. This is just a random idea. This, like, Terminator idea would make a great video game. Why has no one made this yet? I mean, there. I'm sure there have been Terminator video games. Right, based right. Based on but the I'm movies. About, like... A separate series where that's the, like, the idea of it. Right. But, like, the idea of, you know, two... You know, at least one a Terminator, two entities with at least one being a Terminator go back in time to protect someone. You know, they just like it could be a multiplayer game, like 1v1 multiplayer game. You get dropped into a 3D map. One of you's, you know, you both have to to find the same person. Yeah. And you have to find the same person, one to protect, one to kill them. And you just go, you know, maybe you can make it you know, 2v1 Why by making the person that you need to protect also a player. Yeah. It, it would just be such a good game, and you could pick different characters like Reese or the T101 or T1000. Hmm. That could be. That could be interesting, yeah. Yeah, it'd be a great game. Why has no one done this yet? Hmm. That, yeah. I mean, hey, yeah, I I guess that's up to you to do it. Make the, make the game. <laughs> It's a lot of work. <laughs> Making a game's a lot of work. Maybe you know one day. Yeah, you you'll you'll you know you know just maybe maybe one day I'll be able to get a team to help you make it. Yeah. You know, I've been trying to start making a game. I, God, I have no idea where to start. Yeah, it's. I have I have the idea. I have a great idea. It's a good idea. I know it's a good idea if I could just do it, but yeah. I don't know where to start. Yeah, you'll you'll figure it out. I think like once you go on and you learn more about. Uh, game making because I mean you're you're going to school for like 
programming and stuff, right? Yeah, computer science, which... Computer science, yeah. I haven't told you this yet, but I'm actually taking a leave of absence from that for a year because, oh, God, stressful. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Huh. I was not okay. But so hmm. I'll just take a year until I'm okay again. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. So sometimes that's what you need. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm sure a computer science degree is not d- easy to do. Like, that sounds like very complicated stuff. Well, um, I don't know. <laughs> Not specifically computer science classes, but just, you know, classes in general, the stress of studying, the stress of, yeah, you know, we haven't been on campus for a while, so I can't make any friends. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, all this stuff compounds. It's not great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a mass communication degree, so it wasn't too difficult, but. <laughs> mm-hmm. You got your little socialite degree. Yep, got my um, liberal arts degree, you know. Yeah. The easiest degrees to get, but the most useless ones, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, well, is it, isn't philosophy an extremely hard degree to get, but it's also basically completely useless? Is it hard? I don't know if it's diff- hard. I don't know. It probably depends on how good you are at philosophy, I guess. I don't know. I really don't know how difficult it is to get. I, I feel like being good at philosophy is also a philosophical question because it's like, I don't know, yeah. how do you get good at philosophy? Yeah, well, I feel like, so philosophy, a philosophy degree, I feel like you have to be really, you have probably have to lot, write a lot of papers. I feel like it's not, you're, it's not going to be a lot, a lot of your classes aren't going to be based on tests, taking tests probably. Because mm-hmm. like, taking a test is not going to show you how good you are at philosophy. You know? Right. The entire point of philosophy is there, there is no right answers a is, lot of time. Yeah. The whole thing is like that your answer makes sense, I guess. The whole thing is like a more about how you think, like about like thinking about things in, tr- in interesting ways, kind of. Yeah. So like it would make sense to have like it based on like writing papers or having discussions and debates and whatever, not, a test is like a meta major. It's like a major about other majors. <laughs> I guess. Weird. Yeah, yeah. Also useless in job searching or, or something, I guess. I don't know. Unless you're going to be a philosophy teacher. I. <laughs> what can you do with is, a philosophy degree? Uh, teach philosophy? College is messed up. We should move on, though. <laughs> yeah, we should. We should. Uh, we're, we're, we're far away from the, the, the topic of... of the episode. Well, we'll have yeah. a special episode just talking about how ridiculous college is, you know. <laughs> That'd be great. Just oh, yeah. air our grievances. Yeah, we both have our own individual experiences with college, so we yeah. <laughs> we can, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, anyways, so I guess we're about ready to uh, close here, so just about an hour, so a good, good length here. Mm-hmm. Um <clears throat> So yeah, um, any final thoughts on the Terminator movies? The first two, at least. <laughs> They're really good. There should be a game. Yes, just like the one you described. That that yeah. could be interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, they are really good. Um, I think Terminator Two is now one of my favorite action movies of all time. Um, it's up there with like Die Hard and Mad Max Fury Road. It's like my favorite I action still movies. Need to watch Get Die Hard, but you yeah. Know. It's a good movie. It's a good movie. Yeah. Maybe maybe we'll do that eventually in this in this podcast. I don't know. Um, yeah. So yeah. So we're about ready to close. Um, so thank you for listening to Waban. Uh, whether it's your first time or your uh, return listener, um, appreciate it a lot. Thank you. And um, there are multiple places you can listen to the podcast if you'd like to. Um, we, it's on my YouTube channel, which is called NIM TV. That's N I M T V on YouTube. Uh, there are multiple different playlists that help to organize the podcast on there. So there's like a playlist for our Bojack Horseman discussions, our avatar discussions, and then one specifically for like movie discussions. And there's one for specifically for, um, guest episodes, which we've only had two so far. Um, and then there's one playlist that just has all of them. So you can separate them out uh, that way if you want. Or you can listen to it on an audio platform uh, if that's what you 
prefer. So those uh, platforms you can listen to it on are Anchor, uh, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Radio Public, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. So if you just search will ban on any of those, you should be able to find it. Um, so yeah, thank you for listening. Um, next week we will be talking about um, BoJack Horseman season five. So we've been doing BoJack Horseman discussions of each each individual season. So next week we are on season five. So look forward to that. Um, the podcast comes out every Saturday at noon Eastern Standard Time. So that's when you can expect every new episode. Anyways, thank you for listening. I've been Nim. I'm the goodest boy. And remember, we'll be back. Yes, we, <laughs> we will be back. A little joke, but you know, whatever. We have, we have to do that, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's We'll perfect. be back. We'll Good- be back. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone.